Welcome to our regular Board of Education meeting. Today is Monday, April 10th. Please join and, and stand and join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The mission of the White Plains Public Schools is to educate and inspire all students while nurturing their dreams so they learn continually, think critically, pursue their aspirations, and contribute to a diverse and dynamic world. Good evening, everybody. I would like to ask you to join me in a moment of silent reflection as we honor the memories of Barbara Barnes, who worked as a substitute senior typist starting in 1972 until she retired as a switchboard operator in 2010. And Angel Gauthier, who worked as security at Highlands from September 2015 until March 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ricca. Mm -hmm. Before we go to our uh, to honor our student athletes, I would ask if there are any brief comments um, from the board um, on activities. Mm -hmm. uh, attended. Two, mm -hmm. um, a few weeks ago, the scholar. I know we're here to honor our scholar athletes, but a few weeks ago here at the high school, we had a beautiful display of the um, White Plains High School art uh, portfolio uh, exhibition, and it was out in the lobby, and it was just so many different mediums and media that were presented, and we have so many talented students uh, here in the arts, and it was a great opportunity to see that. Um, as well as visiting Mercy College, we have a few teachers that uh, continue to return to the classroom as students, uh, and they did that in the capacity of college STEM ambassadors, and they did action research, and they presented their action research um, to their professors and to some board members and some superintendents in the area. So we had a few White Plains uh, elementary school teachers and middle school teachers attend that. Um, and I also attended the Common Circles pop-up here at the high school. I think it's now moved to Eastview, and it'll be over at Highlands relatively soon. But that was a unique experience that gives our students and the parents that attend um, an experience with Holocaust survivors as well as liberators. And it's through some pretty cool AI technology where the kids could probably speak to it better than I can, but you get to ask the AI questions, the um, Holocaust survivor questions and the liberators questions, and they respond um, in real time to your questions. Um, as well as a few different um, art exhibitions that are in a combination with that. And that's moving to Eastview uh, and Highlands in the coming weeks. Um, and that's all Thank I have you. for Charles. Yeah, just very briefly, um, before the pandemic, I used mm -hmm. to get asked to come into the high school and, and some of the middle schools, the middle school, um, just to, they, they want me to lecture about being a lawyer and a board member. Couldn't be more boring. But what I, it's an opportunity <laughs> to speak and actually listen to the students, because I'm a firm believer that adults don't listen to kids enough, that kids are barometers of their time. They reflect what's going on. We would be doing, if I was 16, I'd be doing whatever they were doing. So it's, I've resumed that practice in about three times since the last meeting I've gotten in, and in classrooms and had conversations, and what I find are incredibly intelligent, engaged students who are very, very concerned about the world that they will soon be joining, and I join them in that. Um, they know that we're trying to protect them in terms of safety, and um, they're concerned about the environment, and they're concerned about a lot of things, and uh, I appreciate their concerns, and uh, so I just share that with you. Thank you. Um, just very quickly, I, I had the opportunity to attend uh, math night at uh, George Washington, and, and what an exciting uh, way for our students to really just uh, learn math and accentuate their skills. Uh, the teachers, um, everyone was just so engaged with these very creative games to, to reinforce math concepts, and I was very impressed with that. And I will say, I did meet a student, and um, uh, uh, Principal Mungin introduced the, the, the student to me, and he said, oh, I know who you are. And I said, okay. At the end of the night, uh, Principal Mungin said to me, she said, uh, 
are you in a sorority or something? And I said, well, yeah. Well, he noticed that on your bracelet. And I thought, what an observant student. And I was just so happy to meet his acquaintance. But he was able to tell me, oh, he told Principal Munjin, I knew she was on the board, but I didn't know she was in that sorority too. <laughs> so it was really quite nice. And lastly, I am working on, on the committee, the strategic planning committee with the city um, to look at how we can enhance our city right, to be more of a learning environment as well um, for our students and provide arts and recreation to complement what's already happening um, in the school. And I'm just so happy to be on that committee because it takes into account our most precious resources, our kids, and to make our school and city being uh, one huge learning environment I think is such a benefit to our community. I'll go fast. Um, so I wanted to mention that um, as part of the New York State uh, School Boards Association delegation, I attended the National School Boards Association meeting uh, convention down in Orlando, Florida. And I look forward to bringing back all sorts of you know, ideas and programming um, that I experienced. I'll just mention that you know, there were lots of things on federal updates, on uh, President Biden's uh, budget proposal, possible legislation. Um, looking at implicit bias and impacts on leadership, um, Title IX and public schools. So lots of really interesting presentations. One of the things we're going to have to start worrying about in the future as educators, and really should be worrying about it now, is how artificial intelligence is going to be affecting what we do in the classroom and in our schools. Um, one of the co-creators of Siri actually uh, gave one of the keynotes, um, and it was really interesting, and it's going to have profound effects on, on, on what we do um, you know, with our students. Um, I also attended some education law seminars that were hosted by the Westchester Putnam School Boards Association and involved area um, uh, education attorneys. So again, I'll bring back some of those materials to the school board. I'm working on the uh, Science Standards um, Implementation Committee with a focus on the um, New York State Middle School Science Standards um, and, and our curriculum. Um, saw Moana Jr. at Highlands, which was really fun, and Eastview on Broadway, also really fun. We have a lot of uh, budding talent, um, so that's really great. Um, I also went to GW Math Night and even won a bingo uh, <laughs> game. Um, and I also wanted to add to what Kane said about the common circles. So a lot of us went to the ribbon cutting as well for that. And I urge you, um, there will probably be opportunities for the public to attend. There were some opportunities at the high school and I would assume as well at uh, Eastview and at Highlands. So I really urge you to attend. Um, Really, um, it looks at you know communities of belonging, helping people to get to know one another, creating bridges, empathy, reducing bias, um, and really builds on sort of individuals, communities, how we connect the past with the present, with the future, Holocaust and genocide. So um, really a, a worthwhile uh, experience. Um, I attended a PTA Council, MAS PTA meeting, and a GW PTA meeting. And also the White Plains Public Library um, had its spring gala. Um, and the theme was celebrating the freedom to read, which was really impactful and, 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 and important. So thank you. Thank you. We'll keep the room, so I'll turn it back over. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'll turn it um, uh, to Dr. Ricca. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hope, hope you all had a great holiday uh, and, and spring recess if, for our students. And if you, were, if you were able to go and travel anywhere, I hope you had a great time. This is um, one of the, the best aspects of, of what we do here, in my opinion, in White Plains, where we focus on our kids. But before I turn it over to Mr. Cameron and our outstanding coaches and assistant coaches, um, I, I do want to thank all of you in the audience this evening, parents, guardians, loved ones who support our children um, and our student athletes as, as they're not only performing in their particular sport but also in the classroom. Um, one of the things I think that makes White Plains so strong 
is that we have this collaborative uh, and, and really, you know, amazingly strong community. So for our students, one of the things you need to know is that there are always adults thinking about what they can do more to help support you, which is a really special thing. Um, and I think it's a blessing. Um, so without any further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Cameron up, Mr. Chappis, uh, and Mr. Martinez. tonight to uh, present to our scholar athletes. We have 118 student athletes mm -hmm. who had over 90 average this year and four of, the, four of the 10 varsity teams received the New York State Public High School Athletic Association Scholar Athlete Team Award. So we're very happy um, for the work that our students are doing. It's certainly a busy day, right? They're, they're up at 6 o'clock, hopefully. Um, and then they're here in school until 2.30 and then practice sometimes till 7 or 8 and getting home from games at 9 or 10. So um, we have all of our coaches. I want to thank our coaches who spent a lot of time with our student athletes developing relationships. And that's been one of our goals um, is, is putting the emphasis of academics first. It's great that we've had you know, success and one of our teams had a ton of success and I'm sure Benji will talk about that. But um, that's amazing that our team went that far with girls basketball. But, but the fact that that our students are focusing on the academics is, is certainly our priority um, and our goal. So congratulations to all of our student athletes and your families. And Mr. Chappas will call up the coaches. All right, we'll start it off with, uh, with bowling. Coach Armagina, do you want to come up and announce your bowlers? Good evening. Um, before I, I present my bowler with his certificate, I just wanted to say um, what a privilege it is to uh, – be able to hear the coach at White Plains and um, congratulations to all the student athletes and parents for always supporting your kids. That's why they're here tonight because of your love and your support. And just say well, a special shout out to the girls basketball team. It was a great ride. Love cheering you guys on and did, you made White Plains proud. All right. Without for, uh, we had one bowler made the scholar athlete. He is a junior captain. He made scholar athlete last year. Um, our bowling team, our, we, in our season, last year we were eighth in the league. This year we, we, came, we built our way up to fourth. And around Jack McMahon, we're looking to uh, take the next step and keep building forward. So congratulations, Jack McMahon, on being a scholar athlete. Congratulations again, Jack. Jack is also a member of our student athlete leadership team. So as I look into the crowd, I see a, a few other members of our student athlete leadership team. So this is a, a, an organization, a group, a committee that gets together. We meet once a month and we discuss things and, and try to give student voice into what we do in athletics. So nice job, Jack. All right, next up, we're going to go with uh, boys track and field. Welcome, everyone, parents, uh, student athletes, uh, student athletes, congratulations. Board members, thank you. We very much appreciate the opportunity to come here this evening. Um, we um, in track and field um, we're gonna do the, the boys and then we'll be back up here for the girls in a second I'm coach furry this is coach Hild Hildago uh, we're representing the track team um, this is an award that we take very seriously um, every time when we're setting our expectations um, our student athletes will tell you we, we spend most of our time talking about being scholar athletes and we tell them that if they're not scholar athletes then they're probably not on the on the right team um, and our our student athletes always rise to this occasion and we're really proud of that um, this year we had an extraordinary group um, this group to me what makes me proudest is they they really took a love for the sport and they respected the sport and, and there was a really great group to be around in addition to that we had a lot of success in addition to being student athletes as part of this group here um, we had two national merit finalists were track team members. We had 12 all league winners. We had five all county members um, uh, winners. We had one state qualifier 
And on the boys' side, we had two relays and one individual um, that qualified for the national indoor meet. So a lot of success there in addition. So we're really proud of this group. All right, here we go. Max Barrera. <laughs> Nate Bartlett. Aiden Bartlett. Christopher Berube. Declan Brown. Come on up, guys. Yep. Patrick Brown. I'm going to read fast. I think some of them are at baseball. Patrick Cave. Okay, there you go. David Cliff. Get you. Joey D'Amelio. Justin Dusosvic. Isaiah Dolner. Sean DeVos. Sean's back there. I know he is. Come on. Jake Friedman, Friedman, <laughs> Ali Goldman, Ion Krager, Karen and Keen, Noah Lee, Jacob Lee, Philip Mann, Michael Mark. Will McDermott, Brian Mulvey, Vincent Poon, uh, Mark Rosenthal, Matt Selinger, Gael Sosa, Ronan Staub, Patrick Stanton, Matt Viola. Yuki, Wantonby, Matt Welling, and Albert Mudondon. That's the boys track and field scholar athletes. Thank you. All right, next up, girls track and field. So as Coach Ferry said, we had a really great season. 16 uh, of our ladies made all league. Two of them are all county. One of them is all section. And two of them made it all the way to nationals in individual events. So very impressive group um, and very proud of all the work that they put in this past season. Uh, here we have our scholar athletes. Olivia Tuzel. I do. Nadia Jones. Abby Roman, she's here. Alicia Ahmed, Caitlin Celentano, Bonnie Sani, Lexi Azrin, Sophie Ginsberg, Andrea Navarro, Ali Gerlich. Sydney Brumberg, Vogue Friends, Gianna Priori, Kayla Rett, Sophia Levine, Carla Regist, Sydney DiPietro, and Lily Castro. All right, one more time. All right, next up, we're going to go with boys, swim, and dive. This is another scholar athlete team as well. Hi, good evening, everyone. 
Um, I'm Coach Fahey. I'm the assistant boys swim coach, one of them. And I'm here for Coach Gill tonight. Um, we had a really great season. One thing about swimming that is wonderful is that, yes, you win meets, but you also have personal best times. And what we saw this season were amazing swims, a lot of encouragement on the pool deck, which we love to see and a lot of personal best and students our student swimmers were going over checking out their times seeing how those times were slowly decreasing throughout the, our meets and i'm really really proud of everything accomplished really happy to coach this great group of swimmers and not only are they fantastic in the pool they also did really well in the classroom so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to read off the students um, who are not here and then i'll read off our swimmers that are here so here we go uh diego chavez we have yeah, a little clapping, yeah. I think it's appropriate. Uh, Nathan Beck. Jack Bott. Okay. Jack Canone. Okay. Joseph Cartafalsa. Jerry Chen. Jonathan Chen. See? That's, that's the encouragement I'm talking about. Jack Cullen. Liam Daffler, okay. David De La Cruz, Connor Ha, Adrian Juarez, Damian Kemna. Um, just a note here, Damian Kemna is also our class valedictorian. Okay. Right. Uh, Mason Conchillo, Aaron Levy, Harry Lopez, Jose Luis Maldonado, Ricardo Mejia, Keegan Murray, Vin Nguyen, Vin is our class salutatorian, Alexander Petty, Lionel Reyes, and Sebastian Maldonado. Now, and here are for the swimmers who are here. Um, when you hear your name, please come up. Nicholas. Bujai, <laughs> Christopher Bujai, Stefan Kamaj. Matt Diaz. <laughs> Connor Dominic. All right, Charlie Maldonado. Kaden okay. Matthew Withy. <laughs> Maximilian Moy. Max Polio. Okay. Lorenzo Riso. Diego Vera. Matthew Vergara. Okay. And Joshua Vergara. Um, thank you, everyone, and congratulations to all of our scholar athletes tonight. All right, next up, uh, 
Coach Telesco from Cheer could not be with us tonight, so Mr. Cameron is going to step in. Mr. Cameron, coming up. All right, are our cheerleaders here? We have five cheerleaders. Come on down when I call your name. Daniel Acevedo. Serenity. Nope. No Serenity. Taylor Hemingway Wilkins. Ella Cancello. And Carla Lopez. All right, congratulations again. Next up, boys basketball. Come on up, Coach Mayfield. Good evening. Uh, Thank you to the board and administration and the athletic department for always supporting all the scholar athletes and all the student athletes. Congratulations to you all on another successful year. Uh, boys basketball had a good season, 15 and seven, with a solid core coming back, looking to improve upon that. Some of the highlights of the season, uh, winning in South Carolina, winning that tournament, winning the Harrison tournament, going to the second round of the sections. Uh, we had three all-league players, two all-conference, and two all-section players, and one a scholar athlete um, court of excellence award winner for only the second time in our history. So we had a, we had a very successful season and we look to build upon it. This year's winners, Luke Brooks, A little faster, Luke, a little faster. <laughs> Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. And our second one, Jake Labrosiano. Congratulations, Jake. Thank you, and congratulations to everyone. Thanks, Coach. Next up, uh, this team doesn't need any introductions because Mr. Cameron already mentioned before, but Coach Benji coming up here for girls basketball is another scholar athlete team. This was an amazing year um, for not just the team, but I think for White Plains, the school, um, and we got to um, – Push forward to make that happen year after year. It was a um, beautiful year because when we started out the season, I talked about academics. I said, in order for us to be um, known as a good team, I want you to be good in the classroom. And these young ladies, they bought into that. Now, I have seven athletes here, but actually the whole team, right, had good grades. They just didn't hit that 90 mark like those beautiful ladies back there. So there were a bunch of 98s, 96 averages, and they really put in some awesome work in the classroom. So let's just give them a round of applause for that. <laughs> and that carried over into us winning um, 23 games and winning the league. Then we won the section, regionals, and then we went all the way to the states. And that happened with the family support too. So parents, I gotta thank you for all the support that you gave the program and helped us out and kept everything you know, afloat. <laughs> then I gotta also thank Mr. Cameron you know, for the leadership that he provided and making sure everything went smooth for us this year. And you know, I appreciate everything because this moment to be here to talk about the good season we had and leaving a legacy, that's what those, those young ladies did. They left a legacy, and we have to um, expand on that. So I'm going to call up some names. The first lady, 
I think she has about a 97, 98 average. And this is Ava Darcy. Now, Ava, her, and Karen, they had a battle going on about who was going to be number one. Um, and that was a beautiful battle because whenever a student need, like, extra help, I would go to Ava and Karen, you know, and they would help the students that really needed to be pushed in a certain areas academically. So let's give it up for that. <laughs> this next young lady, I mean, I can yell at her, I can scream. I can do so many things, but she'll just give me a blank stare and be like, you know what, whatever, coach. But as much as that, you know, happened, she pushed so hard in the classroom, she had a 90-plus average. This is Capri Damar. This next young lady, she's, well, actually, she's from White Plains. She was going to another school, but then she came here this year, and I call it a quiet storm, but my thing was I was going to help her get it out of that quietness she was in, kind of shy. And as you can see, as time went by, she, um, she began to talk a lot, you know, voice her opinion. And I got to sit in the classroom one day where she had to give a speech, and then I realized, you know what? She is very vocal, right? And... She kept talking, and I, I get group huddles, and she talks in the middle, and she just came a different person. This is Tess Had It. There's the next young lady. She's been in the program for quite a while. Um, she started off the season as my sixth man, and things started happening to where she got in her own head a little bit, and we knew at some point she was going to snap, snap out of it. Her opportunity came, and it was a big game. I think we were in the finals, and two kids fouled out, and I had to call her number again, and she made one of the biggest plays ever to help us win that sectional championship and this is Isabella Maguire. Um, the next young lady, she's like a spark plug. Like every team knows about her. They look to stop her. And we try and slow her down just so she can have a little more patience, you know, with the game. Um, it's good to have a player like this that everybody, you know, can kind of feed off of. And when you talk about lead by example, you know, she talks. She doesn't talk a lot, but she's looking to talk more now. And she does lead by example at a high level. This is a Navy plotter. So she's also all section and all league and all conference as well. All right, this next young lady, um, her size, she's small, but she plays really, really big. So I was talking to the reporter, and I was like, she's like our Dennis Rodman. And the guy said, no, I don't think Dennis Rodman. She's more of like a, a warrior. Um, and her size doesn't matter because she, she takes on the team's like biggest player and she does an amazing job. This is Annalise Reggio. Now, when I was talking about that battle between Ava, this last lady, she held us down academically at a super, super high level. Um, and she'll be attending Skidmore College um, to further her academics and athletic career. And this is Karen Sergi. Good job. 
I really appreciate the support again. Um, thank you so much, and thank you for all the support from the administration, board, athletic directors, principal, superintendent. Really appreciate y'all. Thank you. Ice hockey, come on up. Uh, quite an honor to be here. I'm going to be very brief. One of my players has a tryout in about 10 minutes, so I want to get him out of here. Um, but congratulations to everybody here and your families. I have three players who couldn't make it today. Um, Julian Bestricki, Ryan Conrad, and Ari Bernstein. And my first player that's here, Josh Levin. <laughs> Next up is George Snyder. And my last athlete here, Joey Kittlestadt. And before I go, I'd just like to mention that not only do these gentlemen work their tails off on the ice every day, they're all great hockey players. Um, clearly, they're good in the classroom, but they're better people. All right, their parents raised some really outstanding young men, so very proud of them. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, last but not least, absolutely not least, Coach Carroll coming up for wrestling. So it's really great to see so many White Plains athletes getting this award tonight. I'm very proud of our wrestling team, a bunch of hardworking individuals. Uh, first up, Nicholas Troiani. <laughs> Ryan Chung. Oh, <laughs> Lucas Rhodes. Vincenzo Buonanute, Justin Lopez, Thank you. Daniel Chung, Yaniv Dardash Weiss, Justin Milanta. Michael Bellantoni, <laughs> Alex Matthews, <laughs> and Max Polner. I just want to thank everybody again. Let's give another round of applause. Another big thank you to the Board of Ed, Superintendent, everybody else, the, the grounds crew who's always worked really hard, the custodians who've worked really hard to make the seasons happen. Everybody kind of plays a part in this. So once again, thank you again. Have a good night. Get home safe. And this is really important. I just want to thank, I want to thank the Board for all the support that you provide to all of our kids, but particularly our student athletes as well. I think, you know, for instance, on tonight's agenda, we have additional modified coaches that the board is supporting. 
That's because we have so many more students who wish to participate in athletics. And that's really great. To not have to think about or talk about potentially cutting, um, cutting down opportunities for kids. Um, so, you know, this, is a, this was a, a great celebration tonight. It's always fantastic to celebrate our scholar athletes. But our athletic program uh, continues to grow, uh, continues to serve as a feeder opportunity for students who are going to go off and perform and, and do extraordinary things in college, but also students who just want to try uh, their hand at, at a new opportunity, a new sport. And uh, I think that's a really, a really special thing, and it's definitely not something that's able to be achieved everywhere. So thank you all for that. Thank you. Um, next, Thank <laughs> before we get to the presentation of the budget, because it's so crowded, I wanted to ask, <laughs> will there be any public participation tonight before I go through? Okay. <laughs> there is no public participation tonight. Thank you, everyone, for staying. Thank you. You know, it's great when we get to be up close with one of our newest parents, kindergartner. Awesome, awesome, welcome, welcome. And awesome. Welcome to our district. <laughs> and of course, our supporters, our, our, our PTAs, our te everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Frank, our assistant, Suze, John Savitz, board members, board clerk, superintendent. Thank you, everyone. We're all going to sing awesome. by us. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> let's, go over the, um, let's go over the budget. Yes, and, and thank you, uh, Madam President, and thanks to the, to the trustees. And, you know, this has been a, a long process. I always like to thank all of our team members who contribute to the construction, the deliberation, and the presentation of the proposed budget. I'm not going to go through the entire presentation this evening. The, all of this information is available to our community members on the district's website on all about the budget, and there really is everything about the budget. But the Reader's Digest version is this. The proposed budget this year continues to, to protect and, and also expand upon our opportunities for our students. So everything that our, our children presently enjoy within the school district is contained within this budget plus. Now we didn't add a tremendous number of faculty or staff team members to this year's budget, but we didn't need to. Um, the board had undertaken in accordance with the long range plan over the last several years um, the expansion of programming and the opportunity uh, for additional support staff members, particularly in the areas of, of social and emotional support, so our helping professionals, school psychologists, school counselors, um, sociology, all, all of the folks, social workers, all the folks who are continuing to support our students both in the classroom and outside of the classroom as well as our families, and those are all supported in here as well. Our facilities and, and maintenance plan, again, thanks to Mr. Stefanelli and our team, are, are captured within the proposed budget as well. And um, we've also uh, made some changes within uh, the organization using resources that we presently have through attrition to be able to make movement um, to support our students. The end result is a fiscally conservative budget that stays well within the tax cap uh, uh, at 1.9%, where it could have been up to about 4.3%. Four, four, six. I was going to say six, four, but four point four six. Um, and again, no tricks, no gimmicks. Just solid, long-range planning, solid fiscal planning. There are a number of things that we're keeping a close eye on, particularly the fact that the state has not yet uh, been able to achieve uh, a agreement on a budget. We're in day ten. Um, however. Uh, we know that there are, our elected officials are working diligently right now because they're keeping contact with us to try to get this and bring this home. Is it possible that the tax levy would in fact go down a little based on whatever the state would end up providing? Unlikely. Unlikely. Um, but, you know, we again, keeping, yeah. keeping yeah. our eye on things. And, and of course, as, as you all know, and, and, and the Finance and Audit Committee, um, you know, are, are key to this, uh, we make our, our projections in terms of uh, state aid um, foundation aid and the like in very conservative fashion. Yeah. So, you know, if, if numbers come back and they're favorable, um, that's great. We'll yeah. work with that. And, we'll, yeah. of course, we'll report out to the community. Um, but right now we're just kind of keeping an eye on uh, in terms of getting it done in time for the election. Yeah. Yeah. So, Madam President, I, I think with that I'm happy to – I think – Probably burned all of you out on, on questions. <laughs> We've looked, we looked uh, the budget many times, right? Yeah. Well, you know, and that's another thing too is that for us in White Plains, um, you know, it, it, there is no budget season. We're we're always working on the plan 
because it intertwines with everything that we do. So we, we you know, we're doing long-range planning, we're doing fiscal planning, we're doing curricular planning, we're doing athletic planning, we're doing extracurricular activities and facilities uh, planning, and, and all of that intertwines. So um, it's an ongoing conversation, and I think that puts us in a pretty favorable position uh, in terms of what we're able to do. Um, the only, um, if, if, you know, we're going to vote on the budget tonight, and, and the, there was one question that I had that when we get to that item, yes. I'd like you to expand more on that. But the bottom line is for the budget, we've been able to plan, we've been able to save, if you will, and move monies um, uh, to take care of debt while new debt comes on and, and really be prudent. Um, and how we, we spend our money. Of course, our, our long-range plan does, does play a role, but for me, you know, we, we are planning for our pilots that are going to come off and, and ones that will come on. So there's always a balance there so that we make sure that um, we're able to execute what we need with excellence. Um, the services that our, our students need. These formulas are very complex and every year I look at it and I go, my gosh, I think I've got it. But then when you talk about it, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know. But the bottom line is that, you know, at 1.9, we're, we're a little under um, the tax cap and, you know, and that's in consideration of our, you know, our families. You know, we all work very hard. And that's really to, to, to tax um, and save wisely and prepare for the future. Millions of dollars, you know, and when you, when you look in, and, and hopefully members of the community will, will go and, and look into um, uh, the budget presentation and see that over the years, because of the way the board has operated, um, you've been able to return millions of dollars uh, to the taxpayers in, in, in ways that are, are meaningful. Um, as an example, last year you, the, the, the budget was, was no tax increase. So, you know, the, the, our goal is to provide the, the best possible education we can for our children, but also at the same time continue to maintain that fiscal line and spend every single dollar, um, you know, as, as prudently as we possibly can. While we expand opportunities for students, and we're yes, continually doing that as well. Yeah. If I could just jump in, too, I mean, uh, Obviously, there's no surprises in this budget, which is good. Uh, we talk about our long-range plan, which helps build in those no surprises and a very uh, visible process that we've had. Uh, we've had input of our community volunteers uh, on our finance committee, which we're so, uh, very grateful to have. Uh, and, and I think just as, uh, as Cheryl just said, uh, we're able to provide program to meet student, student needs where they are and at the same time hopefully uh, provide program to get them uh, further along in their educational journey. And, and it's, it's a long process and I think, again, even as we sit in this room and uh, I look at what we have here, the, Frank, the floors are fantastic and the tables, <laughs> I mean, and the really. tables are all in one piece. They're, they're, they're in really, no, they're oh, really, really good shape. I mean, you, you think about a building that gets use of 2,000 students a day, uh, the daily wear and everything else uh, behind it, and. Uh, it's a testament to the facilities department's uh, custodianship of, of uh, the building and the assets of the district. And that's important uh, because they're here today and they need to be here in the future as well. And that's what this budget is about, too. It's also about making sure we're able to uh, have, have everything that we have for the future, for the future of White Plains students as well. Yeah. The kindergartners. Uh, that Especially. Are be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And our kids in kindergarten prep. All that's of them. right. Yeah. That's right. And it's exciting. It's actually exciting to go through the budget and see all the wonderful things and yeah. additional things that we're able to do for our students. Um, and we don't always think of budgets as being exciting, but it really is exciting to look at. Anything else you want to say? No, I mean, I can speak to uh, the, the item at, at the end uh, yeah. on additional okay. items, but just so, so everyone's aware, just in case anybody did want to um, leave early, uh, you will notice that there are there are two items. There's the creation of a, of a position and, and, and the abolition of a position. The abolition of a position is not filled. This is, a, this is the former position that used to, it was kind of an amalgam of uh, homebound instruction, superintendent's hearings. Uh, and I think, yeah, homebound instructions and student activities. And so uh, there's, there, that, that position is not filled. Um, and those functions have been um, reabsorbed into the, the leadership structure. So that position is going to be abolished. And then recommending um, the creation of the new position 
uh, that we're still we're still exploring how that would work, and that's the um, Office of Accountability. Um, but Dr. Han and I, as you know, we, we've been uh, working on that as well. But we need to be able to create that position uh, in, in accordance with the budget. Yeah. That's so no surprise. That's the same question. I right. That's that. yeah. I just wanted that to be clear to anyone here mm -hmm. and anyone um, on the live stream. So. Um, great minds think alike, so you've answered the questions for a couple, few of us, and um, if that's the that's the Reader's Digest. I'm going to ask the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay, so we all had that Everybody question. Everybody had a question. <laughs> right? It was a good one. So if, if okay with you, um, Dr. Rick and Board, we'll go right to our, um, we'll go right to our agenda. Yep. We have um, under summary action items, summary action items four through eight. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions? I just have one question on uh, item, uh, what is it, eight? Oh, the attachment on uh, board docs. Uh, this is regarding the HVAC at, um, where is it? Highlands. Highlands with uh, Taft mm. Electric. I just, I'm just not maybe misunderstanding why the second attachment has East Byram Hill School District. Why is that? I'm just. <laughs> uh, because we're, so we, um, Byram Hill School District issued a bid mm -hmm. um, that we are actually piggybacking onto in order ah, to okay. purchase. Yeah. Oh. In lieu of issuing our own public bid, we're able to access <coughs> other school districts, other municipalities. Through the price that. They they received <coughs> okay. right. We submit you know Bless. what our specifications Bless. are, and then based on the prices and that are in the in board by Byron Hills, with their permission, we're allowed to baby back on to ah. that and be able to purchase. Oh good. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to make sure we're not just we're not paying giving money to Byron Hills. Concerning, I know that we like so, Dr. Yeah. Lamia. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say she's great. It's right. a great way to get a good a good vendor yeah. as mm -hmm. well. Right. So I think right. that's important. Okay. The best price. Yes, I'd like to uh, draw your attention to item B uh, on donations, and of course, we're really grateful for the following: three thousand dollar donation from the Friends of the White Plains. I'm sorry, Friends of the White Plains Public Schools to support uh, one book, one school at Ridgeway Elementary. A thousand five hundred dollar donation. Uh, to the White Plains Fine Arts Department from the Westchester County Music Association, a thousand dollar donation from Dr. Ter uh, Terry Thomas Clem for mm -hmm. the Dorothy H. Thomas Memorial Scholarship, a thousand dollar donation from Mel Melanie Roddy from Apple TV Production for permission to use the Post Road Elementary parking lot for filming, a uh, fifty dollar donation from Marie Gross for the Lois Van Epps Scholarship, a planted tree donated by the friends and family of Leanne Santa Donato in her memory on the George Washington Elementary School campus. Uh, school and office supply donation from Robert Lincoln Jr. for schools to have uh, school supply stores. 75 inch TV monitor donated for Ridgeway School from the PTA co president, Ms. Amy Handelsman, using funds raised from the fall, uh, during the fall. And the following donations were made for the Lois Van Epp Scholarship $1,000 donation from Edward uh, Paduzzi, a $50 donation from Eileen Loveless, a $50 donation from Mr. and Mrs. Marvin Perlman, and a $36 donation from Helen Rothstein. We were really grateful for all these donations. And you know, annually we see so many of the same uh, very generous Thanks. benefactors appear. Um, so thank you to, to everybody who, who contributes and supports our children in our school district. Thank I'm you. Sorry. All in favor? Sorry, just one more question about item five. It's just the, because it has to do with the voting, the areas where people vote, we're changing that. We used to have six polling places. Battle Hill was one. And so it's coming back. back. Yep. Okay. So, and, and great, great for bringing it up. It's important yeah. to note. Yes. Um, initially, we thought that we would be unable to use the community room at Battle Hill. But we can again. But now we can. Okay. So we're going to be going back to our, the original configuration. So nothing has changed. Great. So no, oh, no, great. no lines are being No lines are being changed. Nothing. nothing. Great, Everything okay. is, is good. Yep. Good news. Thank you. And we're really appreciative to um, our, our community members in the, in the, uh, the complex. Um, for allowing the use of the community room for voting. I have no more questions. No more questions? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next we're on to individual action items. The first one is um, the recommendation to adopt the proposed budget for the 2023-2024 school year. May I have a motion? So, the second. Questions? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 I guess we should clap. Yeah. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Goes to the voters. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have the recommended um, approval of out of state of an out of state field trip for the White Plains High School Avid class. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Yes, and I will say it's it's really great to be able to provide these field trips for our student because we really haven't been able to for almost three years. <laughs> and a big thanks to our faculty and staff members who volunteer to chaperone as well, oh especially for overnights. Yeah. 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 Those are nice little board members. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a, to chaperone, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. All, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have what we spoke about before, the approval of um, the establishment and ab abolishment of pedagogical and non-pedagogical positions as part of the 2023-2024 adopted budget. May I have a motion? So, so moved. Second. Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have the recommended approval of the resignation of Jennifer Hammond King, coordinator of ELA K through six pre-kindergarten programs district-wide, effective at the close of business on May 14, 2023. Can I have a motion? So moved. I hope she's watching. <laughs> I need a second though. I'll, I'll second it with a heavy heart and just say with that heavy I think heart. she, working hand in hand with the Deb, uh, her commitment to early literacy and reading instruction was just super impressive in my years on the Board of Education. Yeah. Um, she brought in the science of reading and really focused on data with the use of dibbles and multiple assessments. Uh, so it's always, our curriculum meetings were always excellent and informative mm -hmm. and we just knew things were happening in the classrooms and she brought teachers in to share with us what was happening. and. Um, just sad to see her leave. But she also brought pre-K to a high level. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. right. I forgot well. to work with pre-K yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 So, well, Thank you, Jennifer, wherever you are. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, is, it is with a heavy heart, but we do know that we will, um, you know, we will have talent, um, a talented person to come in and, and, and pick up and just keep the upward trajectory mm -hmm. um, in this area, so not to worry. I just, I also just want to thank uh, Ms. Hammond King. You know, she's been a, a really great team member. Um, she thinks outside of, of you know, the box in, in a lot of ways and, and is very, very dedicated. And it's, it, it is true with a heavy heart. And, and at the same time, um, it's also an exciting opportunity to see her continue on mm -hmm. and grow. Um, right. and, you yeah. know, so, uh, Wishing, wishing her all the very best, and certainly uh, from my, uh, on my, you know, uh, behalf, I just wanted to thank her as well. Yeah, I think we all feel the same way, and I hope she's watching. We wish her nothing but the best. Absolutely. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the last is we have um, the recommended. Um, uh, be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby approves and authorizes the Board President and the Superintendent of Schools to execute a certain side letter with um, employee 4752. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Are there any questions? No. This is all confidential. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're almost at the end. I will say for the Board um, Committee reports, the you know, the whole budget presentation was a large part of the, um, of what we've been working on. We did have a um, health and wellness committee meeting and, you know, beginning to plan for the year coming up. And I think I've said before, I'm always happy um, that this is a really serious meeting where we do take into account, you know, what our food uh, looks like for our kids, the nutritional value and ways that we can deliver this food um, to their benefit with no stigma, you know, just good food um, for anyone who wants it. Um, and, and I appreciate that, and I do appreciate that my opinions are heard um, within the committee. So um, that was that was the second uh, committee report. Um, many yeah, things, cur hey? curriculum met, and um, we received an email from Deb Hand early last week about uh, 
canceling our curriculum meeting and taking it on the road. And I'll just I have to read the choices we had. And we're like, this was the best email I ever received. <laughs> so we said, Tuesday, March 8th, here were your choices. We had the Science of Reading Committee meeting led by um, Ms. Hammond King. Uh, that was happening all day at Eastview. We had the White Plains, uh, We Are White Plains Common Circles. That was here in the afternoon, which I was able to attend. Right. The Mercy mm-hmm. College STEAM Ambassador Symposium that same night at Mercy. I was able to attend that. GW, many of us went to the math night. Uh, Church Street Parent Engagement, the Science of Reading Workshop for parents. Not only are we training our teachers, but we're uh, sharing with our parents what we're doing in regards to science of reading. The equity visit to church. There was just so much that we all Any given from. Tuesday. And, yeah. Any right. Tuesday. Yeah. Right. Right. So I know we, all of us took advantage of different right. aspects of it, but it was just a really great uh, really good. virtual yep. curriculum. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll cool. mention uh, special ed. So um, as you know, um, last year's budget, uh, included uh, the addition of a new house, uh, East House, uh, in the high school. And so we had Principal Emerly Martinez and Assistant Principal Sarah Hall come to give us updates um, about uh, how the new house structure is working out. Um, and it seems to be working out very well. Um, there's a social worker assigned to each house. Uh, the logistics are, are easier. Um, staff is getting to know the students uh, better. There's more eyes on the students as well. Mm -hmm. So if any interventions are necessary, they're happening sort of in a smaller, um, you know, space as opposed to requiring like a, you know, building level um, intervention. Um, This summer, there's going to be a rollout of uh, restorative circle uh, training. Um, Freshman seminar we heard about as well. Um, Apparently, the school counselors love it. and they are focusing on DBT training, um, so dialectic behavior uh, training techniques um, to, to um, enable the students to really cope better with anxiety. Um, and so um, they're doing a lot of SEL work with the students and um, you know, coping skills, mitigating anxiety, tying these skills to their real life worries. Mm-hmm. Um, so that seems to also be going really well. Um, and just as an aside, there's DBT um, going on at both Eastview and um, Highlands yeah. as well. Um, and great, those were the highlights. Great, thank you. If there are no no more um, there are no more highlights. I want to mm-hmm. just thank John John Savitz for um, making tonight work and, and live streaming it. Thank you for working with us and for your patience. Thank you. It's all good. Thank you. It's all good. Um, and thank you to everyone who stayed. Um, and one second before you go. And without further ado, may I have a motion to end our meeting? So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.